All right. Let's get out our hyperbolas. <coughs> Please take really careful notes. You never know when you might need them. This is where it's different. So far, it's exactly what you did on your quiz. Exactly. What's different now? We're going to make a rectangle. So I'm going to connect those dots, but I'm going to connect them not with an oval, but with a rectangle. And then I'm going to draw in the diagonals of the rectangle. Is this all sounding familiar? Now remember, a hyperbola either looks like two sideways parabolas, a left and a right, or an up and a down. Which one is this one? This one is left and right. Because how do you decide? Real easy. Whichever letter comes first in the equation. Whichever letter comes first. So take real good notes. Make a note of that. Let me open this way this way because the x comes first in the equation and isn't sideways the x direction yeah. yes okay now these points where you just touch the box it just touches the box here and here these big black points are the vertices so on the next quiz you take, there'll be a blank that says vertices. There are two points that go in that blank. And they are these two big black points where the curve just touches the box. We also have to find our transverse and our conjugate axis. Now, remember what I told you yesterday, or whatever day that was I saw you? Transverse, the word itself, contains this VER, which matches with this VER. So the transverse axis is the one that connects the vertices. This right here. So how long is it? Four. 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 And the conjugate <coughs> axis, got the hiccup, sorry. The conjugate axis is the other one, which is six. six. 
transverse vertices. All right, uh, we're gonna get to where our foci are. So two more points. And remember, they're gonna be inside those parabola shapes, right? And I'm gonna figure out where they are real easily. I'm gonna start at my center and count forward and backward some distance. How do I find that distance in a hyperbola? Anybody remember? Uh, Square root of the denominator. Square root adding the denominator. So root 13. Now put your pencil right here. If, if you move over here, which number are you changing? The x or the y? If you move over here like this. X. The x. So we're going to take the original x, which was 1, and we're going to add root 13 to it. And the y is still negative 1. Now we're going to go back root 13. So we're going to take our original x, which is 1, and subtract root 13. So those red points are your focus points. Start at your center, add root 13, subtract root 13. The x coordinate because we're going forward and backward. would be plus or minus because I'm going to have to have a positive one and a negative one. How did he get three over two, guys? Remember how he built the box? Didn't he count up three and over two? Up three, over two? That's slope. Rise over run. Po positive that way, negative this way. So we have both. Always plus or minus for the slope. What point shall I use? If I'm going to write the equations of these lines what point shall I use? The center. Don't both asymptotes go through that point? Yeah. Okay. This is almost too much for the board here. So, now I'm going to write the equations in my lines. So I'm using my point slope format, which we all should remember. We're not going to review that. Go Google it. Or go back to August and watch those videos. I'm going to plug in. I'm going to do the po positive one first. So y plus 1 equals 3 halves x minus 1. And I haven't cleaned that one up yet, but the other one is going to be y plus 1 equals negative 3 halves x minus 1. Question about this before I erase it. I did not leave you. 
very much room on this, so you may need some notes on a separate sheet. That's absolutely fine. I want you to have real good, complete notes. Kind of explain to yourself what's happening. All right, next equation. Here we go. by that what do we know about writing ordered pairs when you write a point how does it have to be x y, x, y. no matter what the order of the equation is your point has to be x y so your center is one zero everybody understand why it's a zero there's no parentheses right so here's my center right out here at one zero Now I'm going to build my box. It's a hyperbola. So I'm going to build my box. So what does that four tell me? Two, two, two. two up and down. So one, two, one, two. And what does the 16 tell me? Four. So I'll this four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And there's my box. Everybody good here. All right, let's throw in our diagonals then. Nobody's great in your picture. So don't worry about it. Draw them in as best you can. But now we have a very big decision to make. Because I know when I draw my hyperbola, it's either going to be here or here. Which one is it? It's the vertical. It's a, with a vertical. Yeah, it's a vertical hyperbola. That's exactly right, Samaya. It's vertical. And I know it's vertical because in the equation, y came first. So where we just touch these points right here, those are the vertices. So when I have to write down my vertices, I'm going to write down those two black points. So I didn't label them before, but you've got graph paper, so you know right where they are. This is the point, one comma two, and one comma negative two. This axis, then, the one that joins the vertices, this guy right here is my transverse axis. How long is he? You kind of an up and down too. Any four. And the other one is the conjugate axis. And you count it back and forth four, so he is eight. <clears throat> in an ellipse, the axes are all about who's biggest, but in a hyperbola, it's all about which one has the vertices. Okay. So this is my transverse axis right here. I'm going to have to go like this. So aren't my focus points on there somewhere? Right? So I, need, I, I, I can figure out where those are if I know how far it is from my center. Remember, it's from the center. I need to know how far up and down to go. So how do I figure that out? Center to focus in my hyperbola, what do I do? Square root of the sum of the denominator. Square root of the sum. So 
4 plus 16, that's going to be the square root of 20, which is 2 root 5. So I know that I have to start at my center and go up 2 root 5. Now, if I'm going up, straight up, which variable is changing, x or y? y. So x is going to stay 1, and then y is going to be 0, the original y, plus 2 root 5, 4, minus 2 root 5. There are your focus points. Now you guys are just sitting there. Did you already figure this out? Yeah. yeah. And you got them right? Yeah. Awesome. Now we're ready for our asymptotes. So what do we need? So we need to know a point, and we need to know a slope. So if we agreed already, I hope, I hope you made a note of this, use the center. So the point I'm using is 1 comma 0. Now what slope am I using? Remember when you built the box? You went up to and over four. So isn't your slope two fourths? Which we will reduce to one half. And there's two of them. So y minus zero equals one half x minus one. Or y minus zero equals negative one half. There are the point slope forms, which are fine, of the two lines that are the asymptotes. What happens if you miss your center? What happens if you're not paying attention and you put your center in the wrong spot? You're pretty much done, right? So make sure you're careful when you put your center. All right, let's do one more together, and then we'll have some of you come up and do some work at the board for us. So let's do one more together, make sure everybody's following along. All right, is everybody ready for problem G? solid lines or dashed lines, it doesn't matter. Nobody's looking at your picture but you. So draw it however you want. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Okay. 
And once you get those in, now you're ready to actually draw the curve though, right? So you gotta pay real close attention to your equation. Which way are you drawing this curve? Can you surmise our vocabulary? Are we gonna be vertical or horizontal? Vertical. We're gonna be vertical again, because once again, Y comes first. Now I'm putting big blue points on here, right where my curve touches the box. It goes right up to the box and touches it. Those are the vertices. What are the coordinates of those two points? You should be able to tell from your graph because you started at your center and counted up five. So that should be what point? Seven. Beautiful. Just look at your picture, count. And then what's this one? Negative one, negative three. Those are your vertices. There's only two of them. I will, I will help you keep that in mind. I'll put parentheses where you can fill in. There will be two of them for you to fill in. With the hyperbola. And in a minute, you're doing one on your own. So are we good through this point? Everybody keeping up? Okay, so now we're gonna do our transverse axis and our conjugate axis. The order that you do all this stuff doesn't matter. I'm just kind of doing it in the order that is logical for me, which you do. Now, how long is my transverse axis? Sammy's going like this. Is he right? Yeah. Yes. Because this is the transverse axis. Vertices, transverse, we count it up and down by. So what's the other one? How long is the other one here? Four. Four? Because we count in sideways two. Does the transverse all, always stay up and down? No. Does it depend on the problem? If it went like this, this would be the transverse. Okay. So transverse vertices. Wherever your vertices are, that's your transverse axis. And it's kind of important to know that because that's also where your both side are, right? They're in here. So I am going to find where those red points are. And I'm going to do it by starting at my center and going down some distance and going up some distance from the center. Make sure you're marking that in your notes because you're taking real careful notes, marking it from the center. Okay, now I need to know how far that is. I need to know this distance right here, center to focus. So I'm going to look at my equation. I'm going to notice that my denominators are 25 and 4. So that's going to be the square root of 29. Okay? Start at your center and go straight up. If you are going straight up, which coordinate is changing? So I'm going to go straight up, X is staying the same, I'm taking my Y, which is 2, and I am adding root 29. And then I'm going to go straight down and do exactly the same thing. So this is negative 1, 2, 1, this is 29. Start with your original Y, in this case Y, because we're up and down and add root 29 and subtract root 29. Those two red things go in the focus blank on the quiz. Watch us. Okay? Last thing, we need our asset. 
What point am I going to use? Negative one, two, my center. Always my center. And what's going to be the slope this time? Up, five over two. So my slope is either positive five halves or negative five halves, depending on which asymptote I'm doing. So what are my equations? Y minus two equals five halves x plus one. And y minus two equals negative five halves. mean by the way the fact that those two numbers are the same what, what's my box going to look like square. it's going to be a square isn't it yeah and how about my asymptotes what will the slope be one this actually has a name this kind of hyperbola it's called an equilateral hyperbola does that word kind of make sense to you equilateral means the sides are the same so the box is going to be um a square and these are the only parabolas or hyperbolas the only hyperbolas um, that have perpendicular asymptotes that haven't been rotated you can rotate them but these are the only like regular vertical and horizontal um, hyperbolas that have perpendicular asymptotes that's all extra information don't worry about it. I thought you might be interested in it okay I need a volunteer now to come up and do two things Put the center on and build the box. Okay? So a volunteer. And do I have one? Okay, thank you. So you're gonna come up. And the rest of you should be doing that too. Put your center on. And build the box. sketch the curve. Volunteer to do that. 
Transverse axis. Eight. It's eight, right? My transverse axis is eight. And how about my conjugate axis? Eight. It's also eight. They're both eight. Um, foci. They are going to be. This is my transverse axis running across here. They are going to be back here and out here. Would everyone agree with that? So, Sandy, you've already done this. How far is it? from the center to the focus. What was that distance? Um, square root of 32, which is four root two. Perfect. How did he get 32? He added the denominators. So, since we're going left and right this time, which, from the center, and here's my finger right here, I'm gonna go right. If I'm going right, which is changing, x or y? X. x. So I'm going to start with my negative 1, original x, and add 4 root 2 to it. And then my y, big change. Then I'm going to start with my original x and subtract 4 root 2, and my y didn't change. So, Sammy, is that what you got for your yes. both side? Asymptotes. What's my slope? One. one or negative one, right? Remember, it's always plus or minus because there's two of them. And what's my point? Negative one, negative one. Here we go. Y plus one equals one times x plus one. Or y plus one equals negative one x plus one. If you have forgotten your point slope form, you had best get it down. 
plug in your center, plug in your slope, and that is all there is to it. You guys get it right? Yeah. Who else did this on your own before I did it? You guys all get it right? Amazing human beings. All right, I'm going to do one more thing, and then I will shut up. Problem two, match the equation with the picture. All right, so what are two things that you can look at? Which comes first and what the center is, exactly. So what do you think, tell me any of them. What do you, what do you think, I'll put them all down here. So one, two, three, four, do you know any of them? Number one is C. Uh, why do you say that? Number one, equation number one is C because it's centered at the origin and X comes first. So that definitely is C. Perfect. What do you think, Gabby? Number three is um, B. Number three is B because kind of the same thing. It's centered at the origin. No parentheses. We're centered at the origin. And Y is first. Beautiful. Okay, how about the other one? Four is D. What? Four is D. Four is D. Look at four. Uh, the center must be at two negative one. And it opens sideways. I think you're right. Which I guess means that A is two. So two is A. Do you agree with that? Okie okay, dokie, Smokies. All right. Next time we have class, is that tomorrow? Yep. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to take a little hyperbola quiz. Now, we just practiced four problems. So tomorrow at the beginning of the period, we'll practice one out of our practice packet, and then we'll take a quiz over the hyperbola. That will be our last quiz of the year. Okay? I will try not to cry. Oh, Miss Ford, I'm not going to be here either. Of course, you're not.